Hi there grade fives, I hope you are well and ready for your natural science lesson today. Today is Friday, so you've got a weekend approaching, but not quite yet. Right now, we have some science to do. And today we are going to look at electrical safety. Um, now safety is obviously a hugely important thing in every aspect of your life. We want to keep you safe and healthy um, as you grow up into adulthood. And so I really hope you pay attention today so that you can make sure you are safe around your home. Um, you may have actually been out and about recently and um, having to wear one of these. Hold on, let's get mine on. Very fetching. My husband says I look better with one of these on. <laughs> but this is um, a safety measure for us at the moment. We wear one of these in order to protect each other from the COVID virus. So this is a safety precaution. And what we're going to do today is we're going to look at electrical safety precautions and how you can keep safe when using electricity around your home and outside of your home. Okay, so to get started today, a quick reminder, as always, of our email address, grade five at worksheetcloud.com. We really do love hearing from you, so please get in touch. Right, so let's have a little look at electrical safety. So we learned yesterday that obviously electricity is incredibly important in our daily modern lives. However, it is also incredibly dangerous and there are safety rules that have to be followed. So you may sit there sometimes and think, why do I need to learn this? Why do I need to know that? When your teacher is rambling on at you, I used to find that a lot in maths, but don't tell Mr. Travis. However, um, this lesson is particularly important because I'm going to teach you things to keep you safe. So there are certain things we teach you at school that are incredibly important to your overall health. Okay, electricity is a vital part of our lives and we did this activity yesterday where I asked you to have a little look around the room and to name the items that you could see that use electricity. I reckon in every room that you are currently in there must be at least 10 items that are currently using electricity. Electricity needs is an energy, sorry, that can flow from one place to another. So in our last lesson, we learned that that energy flow is called a current and it powers all sorts of things such as computers, lights, televisions, um, anything really that requires sound and uh, light. But obviously that can also become quite dangerous because we can have fires caused if electrical equipment is either damaged or not being used correctly. So pay attention to make sure you are using the electrical items around your house correctly. But it's not only fires that we need to be worried about with electricity, it's also electric shocks. So if you are using or being careless with electricity, um, you can actually get an electrical shock. If an electrical current enters your body, your heartbeat could be interrupted, your lungs could contract differently um, and also your skin can become burnt. In the worst cases, people actually do die from electric shocks, depending on how high the voltage is that enters their body. Remember, your body naturally has electrical, electrical impulses. So your brain is firing off electrical uh, messages um, to, from, to your body and receiving them from your nerves inside your body. If another electrical current enters, a big one, it can disturb all of that. And that includes, as we said, your heartbeat, your lungs, and actually everything else. So now we know the two main dangers, we have fires and we have electrical shocks. How can we start becoming more safe around electricity? Well, the good news is there's lots of ways you, you can use electricity safely. You don't need to be scared. So the first thing you need to know is you should never put your fingers or anything else for that matter into a plug socket other than a plug. Um, even if the switch is off, there could still be an electrical current in the socket. So never, ever, ever play with plug sockets. And, you know, I've got a little baby girl. Well, she's not so little anymore. She'll be two in a few weeks. But um, I've got these plug socket covers because not so much your age, you, you guys are mature and know not to do it, but little children, especially if you ever see a little child hovering around a plug socket, make sure you don't let them put their fingers in and you tell an adult. If you need to unplug something from a plug socket, do make sure you switch it off first. The switch must be off 
and then you carefully take it out. Don't yank it out because you could still get a little electric shock from that. And this one is particularly important and maybe you could actually go and have a little look around your house. Don't overload plug sockets. Using an extension cord with lots and lots and lots of things plugged into the one extension cord could cause an electrical fire. So please be careful. So that's plug sockets. What about electrical wires? Because obviously the current is flowing from the socket through the plug, through the wire and into whatever device you're using. So you must make sure if you've got something that's permanently stationed that the electrical wires are tucked away. They're very dangerous to trip over. I've tripped over a few of my laptop here and there. Um, so please make sure that they are um, stored safely. Um, also, if you've got pets, if the pets manage to chew through their wires, they could get an electrical shock. Um, and if wires are dangling off of a countertop, for example, in your kitchen, and a young child comes and pulls, the appliance could fall on top of them. So again, very sim simple um, solutions, but just make sure the wires are safe and they're not easy to yank down. So same applies to cooking. I don't know if you've ever helped your parents make your uh, food. Um, your mum may, or dad, or whoever does the cooking in your house, maybe it's grandma, turns the pan handle away from the um, oven so it doesn't stick out over because if a kid pulls it down they could burn themselves with whatever foods being cooked or the hot water there. Now we all know that really annoying thing when you have um, or you're making toast and uh, the bread gets stuck in the toaster. Yes frustrating but please whatever you do do not put a knife into the toaster to get the bread out or a fork or anything made of metal or anything full stop if the toaster is plugged into the socket. What you need to do is turn the socket off, unplug the device and use something that is not a conductor of electricity. Remember we looked at insulators and conductors when we did our work on material and matter. And then lastly, don't touch a light switch or a plug socket with wet hands. Remember, water is also a conductor of electricity, so you could get an electrical shock. And that's why bathrooms in particular have other additional little things that you may not have even realized were for your safety. Most bathrooms might have a pull cord instead of a light switch, and or maybe the light switch is on the outside of the bathroom. Has anyone ever real wondered why that is? Well, there you go. Um, it's frustrating, I know, because my, my daughter loves, I'm in the shower and my daughter loves to turn the light off. But at least I know the reason it's on the outside is to keep us safe. Um, and even in many bathrooms, there either won't be any plug sockets or the plug sockets will be designed specifically only to take um, devices that are meant to be used in a bathroom, such as a, a shaver or something like that. So as we continue to look through um, things that such as um, uh, devices, um, I, I've already said this one, haven't I, that hair straighteners and dryers and other things shouldn't be used in a bathroom. But then this one is the very important. When you leave a house, electrical equipment such as tumble dryers, dishwasher, dishwashers, washing machines, they shouldn't really be left on because if there's a fault in the in the machine, it could actually cause a house fire. Now, I'm actually very guilty of this. I often will put the dishwasher on and then go and walk the dog. Um, and I shouldn't really do it. So just keep that in mind. And if your parents do it, just say, mum, you know, this could be dangerous. And you can quote me and say, my science teacher said so. And then one of the things that I'm sure is actually available in every single household at the moment is some form of mobile device. So whether it is a cell phone or a tablet, something along those lines. Now, charges for those cell phones and tablets are something that must be care handled with care. OK, so please make sure that you keep safe when you're using or you're charging your devices. Make sure, and this is very important, that you use a genuine brand, that you don't buy a cheap knockoff because the genuine chargers that you buy from a shop, an electrical shop or a mobile phone shop, those have gone through rigorous checks, electrical safety checks, so they know we know that they are suitable for their jobs. But there have been cases of fake chargers that have overheated and caused house fires. 
And then also, not that I think any of you would, or hopefully most of you shouldn't have your device in your bedroom at all, but never charge anything under a pillow or anything like that when you're sleeping. If the charger overheats, it could catch fire. So those are some things that we need to consider when we're dealing with electricity in our homes. Plugs, cables and devices. But now we're going to look at electrical safety when you're out and about. So pylons, and here's a picture there of pylons. Um, you might, if you didn't know what they were, those are the things that support the thick cables that carry the electrical current from the substations to your area. And remember, they got, the electricity goes from through a transformer to up the voltage to be carried through the, uh, the, the pylons. And then when it reaches our areas, it then goes through another transformer to down the voltage so it's safer for our homes. Um, so that's what a pylon is. And then in South Africa, many houses have electrical fences around the outside as a security measure. Or you may live in a rural area and see something like this, where they have electrical fences around pens to keep the animals inside their grazing area. So you should take great care when you are near pylons or when you are near low lying electrical fences, not to get too close and please never climb them. Even if you think they are off, never climb them. Um, and then obviously another thing is don't fly kites or anything like that near pylons or electrical cables. Now I also know that you should also be careful about trees. Now one of the things my daughter loves to do when we go to the park or before the lockdown is she used to love climbing trees, which is fine in a park. I know there's no electrical cables near those trees. Um, often you can have tree, very, trees that are very, very, very tall and they actually are touching the, the electrical cables along a street. If you're using electrical equipment outdoors, which I don't think you would be, but maybe your parents, such as the lawnmower or something along those lines, they should be using a suitable outdoor extension. Now that's very important because those outdoor extension cables are waterproof. And that means that if there is any, if it rains or anything like that, they're safe. So remember electricity and water do not mix at all. And then, so those are the man-made issues, but I haven't written it down, but just remember as well when it comes to trees that if you are ever outdoors, if you get caught outside in a thunderstorm, please don't hide under trees. I know that many of you might be watching here from Johannesburg, which are very famous for their sudden rainstorms. Please, trees, the taller an item is, the bigger chance it has of being struck by lightning, because lightning will go for the, the, the first point to, to get it to the ground. So please don't ever stand underneath a tree, okay? Right, so now that we've gone through all of those different things, have a little look at these pictures here. So I have pictures to illustrate uh, dangers with electricity. What I'd like you to do is pause your video, say what's happening or what's wrong with every picture and why it is dangerous. So let's go through a couple of them now. So I'm going to start in any order. Let's start with this bottom one here. What is wrong with this picture? Hopefully you've all said something about that the plug socket has got far too many plugs in it. Don't overload your sockets. They are not meant to be able to handle that many devices and it could result in a fire. What's wrong with this middle picture? That's right, we shouldn't be using hair dryers and we shouldn't have anything where there is electricity flowing through water. Water and electricity is a no-no. And that obviously also then comes down to this picture here. I don't know why this boy, or I think it's a boy, is uh, mowing the lawn with no shoes on, first of all, in the rain, um, seems very silly thing to do, but you definitely shouldn't mix electrical items outside with water. Here, we have a damaged cable. Remember, this could have been chewed by my pet or something along those lines, but if I plug in this extension lead and have something running off of it, I could cause an electrical shock or an electrical fire. Here I've got some children playing, but there's su a sudden thunderstorm. They should not, in a lightning storm, go under a tree because it will become a conductor for the lightning. 
In fact, actually on that note, if you ever, ever do, the best thing to do, you have to try and make yourself the lowest thing around you. So if you're caught in an open field, you should actually get down on all fours and crawl like a leopard crawl um, to safety. Um, I'm obviously not saying that, but definitely don't put an umbrella up. Remember, umbrellas are made with metal and metals are conductors. And definitely don't go and stand under trees. Okay, here, what's wrong with this picture? That's right, there are children playing far too close to an electric fence. Now, it doesn't matter what they're playing with, they're just too close. Now, and this what picture here, just beside myself, this girl is trying to obviously get something out of a toaster. I don't care what, what material she is, uh, the item is, she's trying to get it out with, but the toaster is plugged in and the toaster is turned on. Turn it off, unplug it, and make sure whatever you use is a insulator. So something maybe wooden, but nothing made of metal, that's for certain. And then lastly, you may wonder what's wrong with this picture. Obviously, sadly, this person here is being electrocuted by the electric fence. He's getting an electric shock. And this person here is going to help him. Now that's what's wrong. Please, you should never touch someone who is getting electrocuted because the electric charge will then flow through yourself as well, no matter how hard it seems. Call for an adult, stay your distance and, and try somehow to get an adult to help you to get that person away from the electrical current before you try to assist them. Okay, thanks so much for paying attention to today's lesson on electrical safety. I hope that you wear one of these when you're out and about to keep you safe from that nasty virus, but also that you now know how to keep yourself safe at home with electricity. Um, there is an activity, as always, to accompany this lesson um, just below the video. Click there and I will see you next week for our science lesson on Tuesday. Have a lovely day further, guys. Bye bye.